We're back with Dustin Sellers, co-founder of Post Harvest Hawaii, one of Hawaii's largest outsourced employee administration companies. So Dustin, you know, you have a lot of business experience, yet you always make the time to give back to the community. You're also involved in coaching. How do you balance your time? <laughs> well, this is a tough question to answer because if my wife is listening, that she probably may not completely agree. Uh, it does help to have a wife of 13 years that works full-time as well and understands the entrepreneurial zeal. So having that that connectivity, much the way you guys do, and, and, and understanding uh, what it takes to build a business and to grow a business and and uh, give back to the community that is your business, there's a ecosystem there. And so I try not to tread too heavily on that or, or abuse that, but when I have to fly out Sunday night and be on three islands for four days and not come back till Thursday, her ability to pick up the slack there has been a you know a, a constant support. And there's a sweet refrain there always with every entrepreneur. There's a spouse involved that is uh, that is supportive of that or at least understands that. And that's pretty much the only thing that, that, that keeps me sane. So when you're in a startup or development company of like Pro Service, um, why Pro Service Hawaii? Why do you make the time to get involved with community? That's just another thing on your plate. Well, you know, my business is supporting other businesses. Um, you know, we represent close to $200 million in payroll with the average company being less than 20 employees. So when you think about that, the tangential nature of all of those individuals and what they each do and the communities that they're in, you know, we represent a very unique seat to the market. You know, I mean, I think there's banks and some of the larger insurance companies, but you know, actually touch and feel of, of interacting with people's payroll and, 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 and getting people's paychecks cut and their... Uh, their doctors' uh, bills paid and the likes. Um, that communal activity is is critical to be you know to and to not be just in all the traditionals where we support spend about three hundred thousand dollars a year in in the traditional uh, large charitable donations. But we do uh, a lot of give back to the community through giving our services for free. So there's a number of uh, a number of organizations that we're talking to now um, that we feel are doing really unique things in the in the. Uh, in the marketplace, where we can actually provide our services for free, giving them great health care rates, great workers' comp rates, great TDI, in, in a way that they, you know, they could not afford normally because they're nonprofits. Can you give us a, maybe um, more of an example of how that actually works and how you guys came up with thinking about how to utilize your business to help nonprofits? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's still on hatching stage because it took us a while to understand nonprofit status and how that relates to things like FUDA, which is the federal unemployment tax. There's, there's a number of things that took us a while to, to, to make us seamless because, you know, we wanted, we wanted to be additive um, and make it easy for folks. So what we've really done is we, we've kind of set up a platform now with one of our internal teams um, that really understands uh, the nonprofit environment. Um, we've researched it with the DCCA, the Department of Labor, and the EOC, and have been able to really kind of put a package together where we can basically offer all the same services, the support, the full administrative support, at no cost to them. So we, as a, as a company, in, in effect, usually charge an administrative fee on a monthly basis, depending on the size of the company and, and, the, and the industry class code, to support those employees and do all of that administrative work that we talked about earlier. Here we're able to give that and, you know, usually 20 to 30 percent below market uh, on the overall W-2, which is tremendous because they can give that back in better salaries because in an environment where, you know, you've got less than 3 percent unemployment, attracting someone to, to a nonprofit environment where you basically say you're going to work long hours, we're going to pay you less, but it's for the cause, they now can say you're going to work long hours, it's for the cause, but we now can give you a 401K. We can now give you, you know, a full buy-up for your family health care. We can give you a full supportive staff from a work comp standpoint if you get hurt on the job. Things that in a, uh, in an environment, the nonprofit, that are always on shoestrings, we think that that's going to be a really neat uh, late 07, 08 kind of push for us of ways that we can support. And John Dean, you know, has, has been introducing us, as, as, as you well know, um, to a number of smaller nonprofits that he's involved with. Uh, we're working with the Scheidler School of Business and a number of others that are helping us find some of those those budding, really kind of cutting-edge nonprofits that, that could use our support. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.